with Lisa T. So, as you can see today, I'm all done up in my St. Patrick's little um, uniform, so-called baking outfit. <laughs> all this is from the Dollar Tree, but I thought we would get in the mood as we get set up for the St. Patrick's Day campaign. I will be selling cupcakes, cookies, cake sickles, cake pops, candy apples, and treat boxes. So, um, I figure each episode we will cover what I'm selling and how I make it. And so, we will go ahead and get started. So, the first thing we're going to do today are the St. Patrick's Day cupcakes. And this is a really easy and simple recipe, as you will see. Um... Further in the video, I show you up close how I do my buttercream and I did a voiceover so that you can see. Um, and as I always say, if you want recipes or if you want any of my special tips, then all you have to do is follow us on Instagram at Thomas Edibles or su subscribe to the YouTube channel, Thomas Edibles. Either one and you get the freebies. So, without further ado, let's get started. We're going to use just a basic cake mix. And I'm going to show you how to make your box cake look like and taste like a great homemade cake. And basically, we're just going to enhance the ingredients. which I have been doing for years, and people just absolutely love it. So it's a good base. We're gonna go ahead and add the box. Tells you to add, as you can see on the back of your box, most of your boxes tell you to add water, um, oil, and eggs. So I do not use the water because water dries out your um, batter. So I, do, I use milk, and actually I use buttermilk. Um, so buttermilk will really keep your case moist. That is one of my little hidden secrets that I've been using for years. And so anytime you have a box cake that's a basic flavor, vanilla, chocolate, um, or butter, you can go ahead and just substitute whatever it says on the back where it says one cup you can substitute with buttermilk. So we have one cup of buttermilk. The box states a half a cup of oil. So we're just going to, I have the oil and it's just vegetable oil, nothing special. And then the next thing that I alter, it says to have add three eggs, large eggs, well, really, it just says three eggs. So, some people use small, some people use medium. What I always use is large. And instead of three, I use four. Four large eggs. You want to make sure when you're using your ingredients that they're at room temperature. And if you forget to have them at room temperature, you can always sit your eggs in a bowl of warm water and let them get to room temperature. Bought these little nifty towels as well for my hands. I'm going to start trying to use gloves. I bought some, but I'm still not comfortable with them yet. So we will mix all this together. And I'm, I'm using my hand mixer because I want beginners to feel comfortable, but also I want you to be able to see. I don't have a clear bowl on my um, stand mixer yet. So you want to start off on low speed so everything kind of blocks together and then we'll move up to medium speed and it only takes about two to three minutes and if you can't like eyeball it then you can set your timer 
you'll know when everything clicks together. You can just look at your data. So, after about two minutes, your color should have dimmed out a little bit if you're doing chocolate. So, your batter has gotten a little thicker. So, you should be ready. As you can see up close, the batter. Gonna give a quick stir around, make sure everything get the sides. Just like that, you're gonna have homemade tasting cupcakes. Chocolate, which is my favorite, of course. Can't wait to eat some, yummy. So we want to get our cupcake tray. <clears throat> our cupcake tray. Which is from a set that I bought off of Amazon. I love this little turquoise color. Last year I did a whole thing. If you can go back into my videos and see the supplies list that I bought. Just making some space. <laughs> See my cute little hat? <laughs> okay, so I'm just using some white cupcake liners. And as many of you may or may not know, if you've been following me, in order to get the perfect cupcake and the same amount in each one, I always use my trusty dandy ice cream scoop. Now, it used to be when I used to do box cakes, you could do 24 cupcakes, but... As with everything, the batter and the ingredients start to change. They start to alter. So now you can only do about 18, I would say. Um, they've just lessened it. So I just scoop, wipe off the top. And these will go in the oven on 350 for 15 minutes. Everybody's oven is different, so you kind of want to mess around with your oven and see. I will say 350 is probably the standard that you should start off with. Um, as we go along and get more into baking, I will tell you the different settings that you can use and the reason why you would use them. Um, for example, if you want round top cupcakes, you bake them longer and slower at a slower temperature, 325, but we'll get into that later. Just for these, all you need to do is 350. And it's probably going to be anywhere on your oven between 13 and probably 15 minutes. Just depending on what type of oven you have and your temperature. So you have to mess around and see what works best for you.
and you'll get comfortable as you're going along. gonna wipe my hands off. And ta-da! We have 12 cupcakes. We'll pop these in the oven and then we'll come back and go over the icing. Um, after this, while these are in the oven, you're going to see how I make the icing. It's like a little five-minute um, and I do have the voiceover so you hear what I'm doing um, and then we'll come back once these are done and we'll decorate. Okay, so now we're about to make the buttercream icing for the cupcakes and I wanted to show you an up close video so you won't see my face but we will go ahead and get started. So, the first part to making the buttercream is you're going to need a half a cup of shortening. And you're also going to need a half a cup of um, unsalted butter, which is one stick. We basically want to mix this together to it looks like mayonnaise almost in a sense. While this is whipping together, I will let you know that we're going to add some merengue powder. Uh, we're going to add some vanilla. We're going to add some milk. As well as the powdered sugar. This is your basic American buttercream. Basic. So, what, it won't have much of a crusting to it which means it'll be rather soft, which is what we want for our cupcake top. So now that it sort of looks like mayonnaise, I kind of let it um, go on medium speed for about three minutes. So you can lift it up, and as you can see, looks like mayonnaise. Very creamy, very soft. Basically how you want your buttercream base to look. So I'm just Scraping the edges down. Before we proceed.
And so basically, lift this back up. What we're going to add now is I have some meringue powder. I have some vanilla. Which you can use whatever flavoring you like for your buttercream, but majority of the time I use vanilla. And then I'm adding some milk. Milk will just make your buttercream a little bit more richer. Some people use water, but I like to use milk. We're gonna let this mix on low. You just want to get all the ingredients in together. You want it on low because the milk, as you can see, um, keeps it kind of juicy. Now, we're going to be adding the powdered sugar. My powdered sugar has been sifted. As you can see, to take out all the air bubbles. So you want to make sure you keep this on your lowest speed. So I put it down on my lowest speed. And we're going to add it in small scoops. Not all at once. Onto the side, as you can see. So, first cup in. As you can hear, the mixer starting to slow down because it's trying to incorporate the butter, the powdered sugar into the mixture. Second cup. Third cup. One more cup. And then we're going to crank it up to medium speed for about six minutes or until it's creamy. So I'm moving it up. Medium speed is like four. And we'll just let it whip together till it's nice and creamy. I would say anywhere between three and five minutes. Okay, it's been five minutes as you can see. It has really gotten really whippy, really creamy. So I'm gonna lift it up so you can see. It's like butter. That's why they call it buttercream, plus you add the butter in there. So very nice and soft. I need this buttercream icing. We're gonna need it to be green for St. Patrick's Day. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in some green, 
gel coloring. I only need a few drops. Good. There we go. So we're just going to mix it on low just to get the coloring in there. This doesn't take that long. You just want to get it nice. You can watch it and see. It's not taking long at all to give us our color. And just like that, it's done. So, scrape all this off. Our buttercream is is ready to go. So basically, while the cupcakes are cooking, we're going to go ahead and prep for the de decorations that we're going to put on top of the cupcakes. So you've just finished watching me make the buttercream icing. So all we're going to do is scoop some into a piping bag. You don't want to fill it to the top. You just want to do a little at a time. Give yourself some working room. Don't be afraid of your icing. There you have it. Looks like a carrot, doesn't it? And you just want to press it a little bit, make sure it's coming out, which it is. So, put that off to the side. The next thing, I'm going to be topping these with some Oreo cookies that are already have like this little green color on the inside that they have out now. They're for Easter, but we can use them from St. Patrick's Day because they're green. And you just wanna take the Oreo, you just need a nice sharp knife and you just wanna chop the cookie into twos, two equal parts. apply a little pressure don't be afraid if your cookie crumbles then your blade is probably not um, sharp enough your knife um, but or you're applying too much pressure so you might have to mess around with it So on top of that, I'm also going to be adding these little Andes candies that I love. Um, it's like mint and chocolate. And so you want to do, you just want to crumble it up. Just 
Oh, not crumble, sorry. Chop it up. And basically, whenever I'm selling or making stuff, you always want to make sure that you make sure everything's even. So I will be putting one Andy's and one Oreo cookie on top of each cupcake. That way, everybody who gets a cupcake, you get the same amount. Uh, I'm just a stickler on that. Some people, they don't mind whether it's even or not. Some things I do. Since these will be for sale, I will make sure these are totally even. So I'm separating it. On my board. So once it's crumbled up, I'll show you. This is very hard. So that's this is the crumble part, and then this is the half part. It's hard to show on camera. Let me crumble one up so you can see what I mean. So that's the chopped up version of one and then it'll be so that will go on top of one cupcake only one so the cupcakes are going to finish cooling and then we will be back to decorate so our cupcakes have been cooled off and I've taken them out of the oven and have placed them in this cute little dish for you guys. Um, I just used some little green cupcake liners and set the cupcake inside there just to give it more of a nice little feel. I was looking for St. Patrick's Day cupcake liners and I waited too late and I couldn't find any. So we're just gonna use the green ones, which is perfectly fine. So now we're ready to decorate our cupcake. And we're just going to pipe a little icing on top. Make sure you're holding your icing tip straight back, up straight up and up and down. We're gonna add the Andy's candy that we crumbled up. Mm, it smells so good. And then we're gonna take two of the Oreo cookies that we sliced and just add them on top. And here we have our St. Patrick's Day cupcake. Now look from up top. We'll do one more so that you can see. Pipe the icing on. I'm just going in a circle of motion. Nothing fancy. So let me show you. So the icing is just piped on. I'll just hold this one up so that you can see as I'm going along. The Andy's candy that you scooped up. And remember, you just want to use one, one candy stick on top. One Oreo, and I just push it down into the icing. And just like that, you have your cupcake. Done. So this is the completed look of the cupcakes. Like I said, let me know if you have any questions, and I hope you guys are getting ready for St. Patrick's Day. It's really a fun 
a nice um, holiday. So we will be covering um, cookies and cake sickles and cake pops and apples will be coming up. So have a great day and thanks for watching the episode. Bye-bye.